Paleo Apprentice here. This is my introduction video for my first um, first video for my channel. Um, basically, this is going to be Flint Napping Made Easy um, from the beginner's point of view. So basically, a little bit about myself before we get started. I've been napping for maybe two months. Uh, maybe at the very maximum 90 days, but um, I want to go on uh, and tell you guys about the tools of the trade. So <clears throat> these are these are going to be some of the things that I just uh, find indispensable to flint napping, and uh, some of the things that I just can't do it without. So um, you might be asking yourself, why should you listen to me? Or who am I to tell you guys what you need to do or how to do it? Um, like I said, I've been flint napping for about 90 days. And uh, some of the things I've done lately, just to give you guys an example. This is mahogany obsidian. Made out of a spall or a flake. This is a Stockton. This is a Burlington Chert, raw chert. A couple, uh, not sure what this flint right here is, but, um, Here's a few of my pieces that I've made. This is the first uh, slab I think I ever worked, or preform, whatever you want to call it. Uh, this is dacite right here. Uh, this is dacite also, I believe. There's some more dacite. There's a Dalton point that I flaked out. And then my most recent points are these three right here. I did these yesterday. This is a lost lake. This is a lost lake and this is a pine tree point. They're super thin. So the point of this uh, channel is going to be to learn together on how to flint nap and I'm going to share the knowledge that I've acquired um, through my time napping and hopefully we can build a, a, a large group of people that are all interested in flint napping and we can come together to learn as much as possible. So, without further ado, some of the things that we are going to need in order to get this flint napping started, um, you're going to need pressure flakers. Now, uh, there's two different types of napping. There's aboriginal or abo, which is all uh, like antler tools, stone tools, nothing modern. Um, and then there's modern napping tools which would be your copper um, steel um, anything with like set screws in it um, well I guess the set screw thing might not be so important <clears throat> like I have this this flaker right here with a set screw in it and this um, tip goes inside of it which is antler but antler just tends to some people prefer ebo over modern but everybody has a different preference <clears throat> i'm just gonna go over the tools right now you've got your boppers which this is antler 
this is antler. And then uh, you got your flakers, which would be here's my antler flaker, pressure flaker. And this is a rib bone that I used for notching. Then uh, I've got a long um, antler tine that I use uh, with this um, strap right here. Tie it to my leg and use that for indirect percussion, which we'll talk about later. Uh, this is a modern indirect percussion uh, with copper, with a copper tip. Also, I have this uh, antler tine on here to uh, it, for more like authentic work if I if I need to use antler um, okay there's that then uh, for abo techniques you'll have your hammer stones which this one's been used a little bit I've got large ones mediums and smalls uh, usually they're a hard stone like granite or things like that. Something harder than flint. You can also use these for anvils to work on. Where you'll set some rawhide over it and uh, using a punch. Um, you, can, you can do some pretty cool stuff with indirect percussion. Um, also you're going to want some type of mask. To protect you from dust, you are going to want safety glasses to protect your eyes from flakes. Um, you don't want obsidian or chert or flint in your eye. Um, I actually have gotten a flake in my eye. I had to go to the hospital. I um, had to wear an eye patch for like a couple weeks. It was definitely not fun. Um, I've got a multi-tool here. These are my copper boppers. I've got large and then grades smaller and smaller. Um, these are my modern pressure flakers. They have a hole drilled down and a hole drilled through. You, uh, you can put a flaker or a copper tip in it and adjust the height um, and that way you can switch the the set screw is just for a quick release out of here so you can switch between um, tips you know you might need a long narrow tip for certain things you might need a short blunt tip for others and then you might need a tip like this which is skinny um, for uh, notching which this right here is the equivalent of this rib bone here now the thinner your um, the thinner your notcher, notcher is the thinner your notching will be um, tweezers these are for pulling out splinters um, coming super handy now you're gonna hear people talking about horseshoe nails um, this is a horseshoe or this isn't a horseshoe nail but this is a square nail that I pulled out of a old house um, this is also a square nail that I pulled out of an old house this is my square nail flaker I use this to do fine edge work or really fine pressure flaking. Um, these aren't set screwed um, flakers. These are uh, epoxied in to the tips, but they're really comfortable. Definitely work well. Um, okay. Another indispensable thing that you guys are going to need. This right here is a loin cloth you're gonna want to put this on every time you uh, you start napping this is more of the aboriginal uh, method 
but it's definitely mandatory. So there's that. Now, this book right here is by DC Waldorf. He was a master napper. Um, it's going to have a lot of good information in here on technique, um, what, whatever you need to know basically is in here. There's a lot of good info in his book, Art of Flint Napping by DC Waldorf. Another indispensable tool, this is a kind of a older one, but there are different versions. This is an Overstreet. Um, this basically has all different types of points in it. That way, when you're making a point or if you need to go and reference what you want to make, you can come in here and get a really good idea of exactly what the point you want to make looks like. The size, the flaking pattern, the notching, um... <clears throat> And, uh, yeah, so this is definitely handy dandy. Uh, another thing that I, uh, that you can't really go without is your hand pad. This is, um, to catch the flakes and hold the, the point and um, stop the flakes from getting jammed into your hand. I've got this one for uh, running longer flakes, and then I have this one here which is rawhide, and then I wrapped it in duct tape to just kind of give it a little bit more uh, hold or life. Um, I have here a Dremel, which is optional, but I use this to uh, dress up my, my points of my flakers, or if my boppers, my antler boppers get to uh, beat up I can smooth them back out like this one's pretty beat up you smooth it back out and uh, it makes a lot of difference also an exacto knife um, this right here is a leg from mm, some type of chair I believe but um, believe it or not you can uh, certain types of material you can um, direct percussion with wood um, but for mainly uh, I use that for indirect percussion and then what else do we have ah yes then you have your abrading tools which are made for um, breaking off and smoothing out uh, and dulling sharp edges strengthening your platforms um, what else do we have that is indispensable oh yes I don't know if I already said but you need these masks for sure eye protection you're gonna want hand protection gloves at least until you you know figure out what you're doing but uh, here this is what they call an ishy stick this is my fire stick um, I use it to get more leverage and more control this is about two and a half feet long but it works great so we're gonna go into using all of these things we're gonna get into each thing individually and um, like I said hopefully we can learn a bunch of things together and yeah uh, don't forget to subscribe and this will be a fun journey um, this right here is a slab slab uh, it's been pre-cut of mahogany obsidian that is for making smaller knives larger points smaller spear point now this is the same type of material but this is pre-cut in the shape of a knife blade and I would say this is about seven inches eight inches long and this is about five and we will be showing oh well, I'll be showing you how to nap those out I'll be showing you guys how to make pressure flakers out of an antler. I'll be showing you how to make uh, handles for your blades. 
I'll be making primitive bows, primitive arrows. Uh, this right here is a knife made out of bone. This is a bone blade knife. Um, it's really cool. And yeah, so this is going to be a fun journey. I'll be showing you guys how to make very awesome, cool, unique stands. Um, not only are we going to be working on arrowheads, but we'll be making uh, war clubs. I'll be showing you how to make imitation bear claws and everything in between. Uh, how to make sinew uh, bowstrings, how to make complete aboriginal knives. Um, everything in between. So, like, comment, subscribe, ask any questions you like, and I will get back to you guys ASAP. Uh, other than that, that's it for the first one. Paleo Prentice, out.